Screen Directors Playhouse, stars Barbara Stanwyck, Wendell Corey, production Thelma Jordan, director Robert Siadmak. <laughs> This is the Screen Directors Playhouse, the Thursday night feature on NBC's all-star festival of comedy, music, mystery, and drama. Brought to you by RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television. By Chesterfield, the cigarette that has, for you, what every smoker wants, mildness, plus no unpleasant aftertaste. The cigarette that brings you Bing Crosby and Bob Hope. And by the makers of Anison for fast relief from the pain of headache, neuritis, and neuralgia. Tonight, the Screen Director's Playhouse is pleased to present a study in dramatic conflicts. You're about to hear our adaptation of the thrilling drama, Thelma Jordan. And starring in their original roles will be Wendell Corey as Cleve Marshall and Barbara Stanwyck as Thelma Jordan. Before we present the first act, here's a message from RCA Victor. Friends, if you study the room you're in right now you'll realize that you can't buy furnishings piece by piece without the final picture in mind. It's that way when you buy television, too. Now, here's how to get the most out of your television dollar. Consider the complete home entertainment picture, radio and records, as well as TV. Instead of having many instruments scattered about, why not settle for one fine cabinet that costs less and contains your complete home entertainment needs? Such a one-cabinet combination is the RCA Victor Rutland. Open the doors of the Rutland's 18th century cabinet and you'll find 17-inch million-proof television with its clear, steady pictures, AM and FM radio, and the Victrola 45 record changer, as well as a changer for 78 and 33 and a third speeds. Yes, so many more families are becoming television owners this week. If you're one of them, remember to see and listen to the exciting new Rutland at your RCA Victor Dealers. Now the first act of the Screen Director's Playhouse presentation of Thelma Jordan, starring Barbara Stanwyck and Wendell Corey. Miles Scott, investigator of human beings. <laughs> That's a laugh. 25 years of trying to understand people and the tragic conclusion that people weren't born to be understood. Take Cleve Marshall, the assistant DA, for instance. It was after office hours and Cleve was sitting around commiserating with himself, a bottle of scotch and me on why he wasn't going home to his wife and celebrate his fifth wedding anniversary. I'm fed up. Ever heard that phrase? No, you wouldn't. You're not married. What happened today? Where have you been for the last few hours? I went down to an antique shop for Pam's anniversary present. She told me what she wanted and where I could get it. It was an old whatnot. I don't see why that should aggravate you. But it does. I like doing things for myself. When it's my wife, my kids, my house. For one thing, I can tell my father-in-law not to come there so often. I can tell him to take his big car out of my driveway and his big fat windbag out of my living room. Now, what's that got to do with the whatnot? Well, it sounds sort of picky, you. It's the basis of it, really. I drove down and went in. No whatnot. The Honorable Calvin H. Blackwell, retired, bless his retired soul, has just been in this morning and bought it for his daughter Pamela for her anniversary present. <laughs> well, she happened to mention to him that she wanted it, too. Does it all the time. If I can't get something for her, father will. An hour and 30 drinks later, I picked myself up and left. As I passed through the door, a very beautiful girl entered. It was the night of May 25th. That's when the file of Thelma Jordan received its first entry. 
Mr. Scott, I've come to see you about my aunt, Miss Vera Edwards. Twice in the last two weeks, our house has been broken into. Uh, that's very interesting. I don't seem to be able to get any satisfaction out of the police. What I meant to say, Mr. Scott, was there are reasons why I have to stay away from them and come to you. My aunt is eccentric, and uniforms upset her. What's your name? Thelma Jordan, Miss Edwards' niece. Well, Miss Edwards' niece, I am not Mr. Scott, so you can save your breath. I'm Cleve Marshall's assistant district attorney. Oh. However, if I can be of any help, a lady in distress is a pretty lady. It distresses my specialty tonight. You can help me, and I'll help you. Do I make myself clear? No, not quite. I'm sorry I disturbed you. Oh, you didn't disturb me. I was just about to go out and find myself a dame. If you'll pardon the expression. <laughs> good luck and good night. Oh, wait a minute. I'm a public servant. I'm supposed to hear your troubles. You listen to my troubles, and I'll listen to yours. You sound very appealing, but I... One drink. I'll buy a drink someplace. Honest, I'm harmless and I'm lonesome. What do you say? Well, uh, on one condition, that I drive. If you insist, you're the boss. I'm glad you said that. Because I'm no dame, remember. <laughs> It's our anniversary, Thelma. How long has it been? Three hours? I'm going to buy you an anniversary present. This is the very rich Edwards estate. This is where the poor relative says goodnight, Cleve. Don't go, Thelma. Pretty Thelma. Thelma with a light brown hair. The minute you walked into that I office... I know, I know, but No I... buts, ands, ifs, whereases, and here to fours. Party of the first part? I love you. Thelma. Uh... I said that before. You have. I have to leave. You can't go. I haven't told you my troubles yet. They'll have yet. to wait. Please, Mr. Marshall. You called me Cleve before. Uh, one minute I feel like Cleve, and the next, Mr. Marshall. I'm going to kiss you. Yeah. Which way do you feel now? Mr. Marshall or Cleve? I don't know. Maybe I am just a dame and didn't know it. Maybe I like being picked up by a guy on a binge. Can't you believe that things happen when you're in love? What's time, a day, a I'm year? sorry I can't say it that conveniently. That's what it is, a binge. No relationship between yesterday and tomorrow. That's all there is, there isn't anymore. I'm getting out, Cleve. Good night, and drive home to whoever is waiting for you. If I told you there's no one waiting I for I wouldn't me. believe you. Drive carefully. Thelma. Tony. Oh, you scared me. I told you to stay away from here until I called you. What are you trying to do, upset the apple cart? I missed you, baby. I was getting awfully impatient about getting my hands on your Aunt Vera's emeralds. Oh, stop worrying. I already have the combination to her safe in the library. Well, what are we waiting for? For the right moment. I'm not making a move until I'm protected properly. Everything is working according to the plan. I've already set the notion that the house has been broken into twice by a phantom burglar. Ah, that's using your head, baby. Well, you didn't think I was playing nursemaid to a sour old woman for nothing. Tell me, what would you say if I told you I had just left the assistant district attorney and that he's on the make for me? Why are you getting involved with the law? If the time ever comes where I need an alibi, can you think of anyone better? <laughs> Well, hello, Cleve. Oh, hello, Miss Jordan. I was worrying about you, whether you got home all right. Oh, I manage, you know, drunks and fools. Well, I'm busy. And... I guess you've forgotten a lot about last night. Apparently, you don't like me in the daytime. I guess I got a little out of hand. I apologize. <laughs> Accepted. So long, Cleve. <laughs> Phone call for you, Miss Thelma. Uh, a Mr. Thompson, uh, that detective... Thank you, Sidney. I'll take it inside the house. Excuse me, Aunt Vera. Who's calling, Thelma? It's all right. There's nothing to worry about. Uh, put down the tray, Sidney. Doctor or no doctor, I want my brandy. 
Hello, Mr. Thompson? A case of slightly mistaken identity. My secretary informed me that you called and asked me to use the name of Thompson. Oh, hello, Cleve. It's nothing really very important. Just one of those things. 24 hours a day and lonesome. I don't know anyone else in town. In fact, time's been full of emptiness since a certain May 25th. I can cure that. Fine. I'll meet you down on the road. Shall we say about 20 minutes? On the nose. Well, uh, thanks for calling, Mr. Thompson. And after that? Oh, after painting scenery that summer, I stayed on at Lake Placid. I got a job at the hotel as a hostess. Then there was Virginia Beach, Saratoga, promoting other people's fun. Then I came here and met you. I guess that sums up the history of my life. Well, if you don't mind, well, let's get out of here. Hey, waiter, here's the money for my check. Let's go, Thelma. Yes, of course. Yeah, through the back door, please. Well, it was a lovely evening until now. Who did you see? Your wife? No, she's away in the beach. Temporarily or the season? The season. I visit her weekends. It was my secretary. I'm sorry. Thumb, I don't care what happens. I've got to see you often. As often as you like. But be careful. Don't call the house again as Mr. Thompson. Why not? Well, why don't you use the name of Smith or Brown? How about or... Dick Tracy? <laughs> it's for your sake. After all, this is a small town and you can't afford any talk. I know. Hey, you, you haven't kissed me once this evening. My mistake, Cleve. Darling, get something on the radio. Sure. Why is it when you first meet a woman, she's only pretty? After a few weeks, she's beautiful. Sometimes it's the other way around. No, not with you. Well, I've told you the story of life with my wife. What do you think? You feel as though she let you down. But you let her down. You should have told her. Well, you can't just say to your wife, don't leave me alone, I'm falling in love with another woman. If it's true, you should have said it. It's true. So you said that first night. Well, there's a difference. I'm really drunk now. I wasn't then. Somebody will be coming up here on the mountainside in a moment, as usual. Thumb, well, I'm not going down to the beach to see my wife this weekend. I can't stand those weekends anymore. Don't you think I feel guilty, too? Not daring to say your name to a soul, pretending you're a dozen other people? Oh, Cleve, what horrible luck. Just when everything I hoped was going all right for me at last. So sick and coming out here to my aunt's to recuperate. Oh, some recuperation. Falling head over heels for a man I can't even be seen with. Parking spots like a couple of teenagers. Head over heels? That doesn't say you love me. I only know I think of you all day and all night. What I'll wear so you'll look at me with that look in your eyes. Like now. What I'll say to you. That I really mustn't see you anymore. And what I'll do the next time you take me in your arms. Oh, darling. Isn't it up to me to take the chances? Not entirely. I'm married, too. I don't think I heard you right. Just that. I'm married. I'm interested, if you feel like telling me. It isn't much of a marriage, not like yours. His name is Tony. What does the last name matter? I met him in Florida a year ago. You still love him? Oh, there's so much I want to tell you. Remember I told you once I wanted to be an actress? Well, it, it was all part of that glamour, I thought. Having a certain kind of attention paid to you, the, the right table at expensive restaurants, dark blue tuxedo, black fedora hat, gold cigarette case. Oh, that's a good thing to get married for, a gold cigarette case. Oh, I don't expect you to understand. I don't understand myself. It was all shiny until you opened the cigarette case and found somebody else's name inside, to Tony from Dimples or Debbie or someone. And then you ran into him, out with them someplace. How long did you stay with him? He stayed with me until my money gave out. Where is he now? I don't much care, thanks to you. 
Wherever he is, there's money, gambling, and beautiful women. Have you seen him lately? No, and I don't want to. I'll be free of him someday, I suppose, but... Oh, there's nothing to be angry about, Cleve. You ought to feel sorry for me. You've got to say it differently. That you don't think of him anymore because of me. I've said that. Again. I don't think of him anymore because of you. Could you? Could you manage soon? Friday. I'll say I'm going up north to see the state's attorney. We'll take the evening train. People will see us. They'll not only say I'm taking the train. We'll go in your car. Oh, yes, Cleve, of course. My car. The two of us together. Oh, it's perfect, darling. Perfect. <laughs> Let's take time out for a message from Bing Crosby and Bob Hope. Say, Bing, you got a minute? Oh, sure, Bob. I got all the time in the world. Don't tell me you own that, too. Oh, never mind that stuff. Get to work, will you? Okay. Folks, better tasting Chesterfield is the only cigarette that combines for you mildness with no unpleasant aftertaste. And you can prove that yourself. Just make our mildness test. Buy Chesterfields and open them and enjoy that milder, mellow aroma. Now light one up, and you'll know Chesterfield's milder because it smokes milder. And Chesterfield leaves no unpleasant aftertaste. That fact has been confirmed by the country's first and only cigarette taste panel. Yes, mildness and no unpleasant aftertaste are what you and I and every smoker wants. Hurry up, Dad. Here comes the music. Chesterfield, Chesterfield always takes first place. That milder, mild tobacco never leaves an aftertaste. Oh, ho, open the pack and give them a smell. Then you'll smoke them. And here is the second act of the Screen Director's Playhouse presentation of Thelma Jordan, starring Wendell Corey and Barbara Stanwyck. Phase two in the file of Thelma Jordan was recorded the night Cleve was to meet Thelma and go north for the weekend. Outside, a heavy storm was in progress. Inside the house, Aunt Vera, believing she'd heard a strange noise in her darkened library, entered with gun in hand. Outlined in the shadows was a figure, rifling her safe. Who is it? Aunt Femi, what are you doing at my safe? Why, it's safe. <laughs> Thank heavens you phoned. You've got to come at once. Something's happened. Well, tell me what it's all about. No, no, no. Don't talk. Just come. I'll meet you at the side gate. Please, please. What is it, Thelma? Cleve. Oh, Cleve. I think I know. Tony's shown up. No, no. Why should you say that? Well, if it isn't Tony, what is it? You thought of him first, too. So did I. No, it's Aunt Vera. Well, come on, talk. What is it? She's dead. What? I was just leaving to get the car out when I heard a shot. She's on the library floor with a gun beside her, the safe open. Another burglary? She had a valuable emerald necklace. I didn't tell you. It's gone. There's some things about Tony, too, you didn't tell me? I don't know. If he were broke or desperate, maybe. I, I, I don't know. I'm afraid. Come on, let's go to the house. No, don't go there, Cleve. Why not? You don't seem to understand why I'm afraid. There was a letter I wrote to him once, ages ago. I said Aunt Vera might be his type. She had emeralds. If they find that letter... Oh, it, it didn't mean anything, did it, Cleve? Just... just female, nasty? I don't know whether it meant anything or not. I don't know, Tony. Maybe I don't know you either. I suppose I had that to look forward to. I'm sorry, well, I, I know how you feel, but don't you see? If it was Tony, they'll suspect me, too. And every place we've been, every phone call we've made... We've been careful... We're not going to let them suspect you. Then tell me what I should do. What you should have done a half hour ago. Go back in, scream, call the police. What are you waiting for? Uh, 
I was hoping you'd tell me to do something else. You didn't do anything else. You didn't change anything in there. A, a little. How little? I rubbed off all the fingerprints. You what? I was panicky. I didn't know what to do in case they were Tony's prints. And yours along oh, with I, them. No, I shouldn't have. But you've been in that room dozens of times. It's natural for your fingerprints to be there. Thelma, where did you remove the prints? The, the, the window where he came in, the gun, the safe. Burglars wear gloves on jobs like that. It's standard equipment. That didn't occur to no, you. No, not until later when I calmed down. So you go around and make it look like a nice inside job. What else? Uh, I, I don't think... I, I, I don't know. Did you touch her? No. How was she lying? Face down. You didn't turn her over. How did you know she was dead? I could tell she wasn't breathing. You've got to go back there and do it over. I couldn't. Your fingerprints on the safe where you looked, found the jewels were gone, oh, on the body. Steve, I can't. Maybe I wasn't close to her, but I, I, I liked her. In that room, it, it smelt of death. It's... I'm going with you. No. No, I, I won't let you take that chance. I'll do it. And make more mistakes? No. You wait for me by the side door in case someone comes up. I'll go douse the car lights. If you should get involved in this... I won't get involved. I'd like to be sure where Sidney is, though. His house is dark. Why is the light out in the library? I turned it out after I cleaned up. Was it on when you came in? No, no. Unhurried killer turns the light out when he leaves. Are you sure? No, I'm not sure. Okay, leave it dark. But put your prints back on the switch in case you took them off. Go on. No, no turn it off. There's a gun next to the body. I don't want to handle it. I'll use my pencil. Uh, it's been fine. Hers? I never saw it before. Put your prints on it. I'll turn her over. Cleve. Wouldn't that have been your first instinct if you hadn't thought of Tony and the Emeralds? Aunt Vera, Aunt Vera. Turn her over. All right. When Scott's men were out here, did you tell them where the safe was in this room? Yes. What happened those first two times? The side entrance was broken into. The next time, we just heard somebody out back. You didn't think it might be Tony before? No, but... But what? Well, I, I saw the necklace was gone, and I remembered. Not many people knew about the Emeralds. All right. Get your prints back on the safe. Put your hands on natural curiosity. Is there anything left in there? Some old papers, it looks like. Papers? A will by any chance? Who is her heir? Maybe you're a rich woman. Oh, no, Cleve. No, she can't it Might have... be tough for you if she did. Well, what would it look like? Oh, forget it. She'd have told you about it, I guess. Oh, yes, yes. Anyway, she wouldn't have... Come on. Now, after I've gone, give me ten minutes. Then scream and run for Sydney. Oh, Cleve, it may be days before we see each other. Turn on the hall light and don't forget to take off that coat. What's his bag doing here? Oh, I, I was carrying it when I... Get it. No, no, let Sydney answer it in the cottage. All right, but I'll listen in. It may be important. She's asleep by now. Can you ring her? I'm sorry, Doctor, but there's no phone in her room. I, I can go over and waken her. It'll take a few minutes. I'll call you back later. What's wrong? He's coming over. When I called you earlier, how did you know Sydney wasn't on the phone? Oh, we haven't time. You've got to leave. Something's happened, you said. That's all he had to hear. That was nearly an hour ago. Where was he? Where were you? I don't know. Please. I called twice the first time he oh, answered. Cleve, will you go? Which way will he come in? I don't know. Get to the window. Touch the sill fast. Uh, all right. That's done. Cleve, the lock on the window has been forced. Did you shut the side door when we came no, in? No, no. Come on. I lock it after me. My pencil. <gasps> it's got my initials oh. on it. I must have left it in the library. Come on, hurry. Maybe if I put the light on, we... Don't. We can't afford to let Sidney see it. Just keep looking. Oh, oh I found it here. So he's at the front door. Scott gets the case. I'll try to get around. In the meantime, you don't know anything. Leave the fingerprints on the safe. If I it's haven't been there... It's too late now. Get in bed. Pretend you've been sleeping. Go on now. Hurry. What are you going to do? I'm going out this window. Leave the storm. The ground is soft. You'll leave footprints. Get back upstairs before he turns on this light, too. Hello? Pamela? Yes? Uh, Miles Scott. Oh, hello, Miles. Let me talk to Cleve. He isn't feeling well. He was supposed to go up north last night. Can't you leave him alone for one I'm day? I'm sorry, Pamela. It's important. All right. He's on the beach sleeping. I'll have him call you back. I'll take it, Pam. It's ridiculous. The short time you have down here, it's Miles Scott. Hello, Miles. Did you ever read the morning papers? Front page, big. Rich old Vera Edwards was murdered. Do you know her? Vaguely. No, her niece, Thelma Jordan? No. What? Oh, yes, I met her once. The night, you know, my anniversary. We only spoke a few words, that's all. Well, get yourself together and come on out to the Edwards estate. There's $200,000 involved in a recently rewritten will. All right. Take me a couple of hours. Bye. Well, I've got to get going, Pam. You don't love me anymore, like Father says. Father knows best. 
Please don't brush me off like that. You're not yourself lately. I can't keep track of you. For once, I have you down here for the weekend. Business before pleasure. You got the car keys? They're in the car. You could have said you were sick. You are. I'm feeling better now. I'll call you from town. I think you were just lying around waiting for an excuse. You won't be lonesome. Your father will be here soon. Cleve, I'm sorry. I asked him for the weekend because I thought you weren't going to be here. When I woke up and you were... Oh, what's the use? It's all right. It works out perfectly. I have work and you have father to complain to. I don't anymore, Cleve. Oh, bet not. What do you talk about, then? It's past talking now. He already knows how distant you are. Preoccupied. How little I see of you. I didn't know you so well and love you so much. I... What? I think as he does, that you're playing around. You have no courage, have you? Father says, father thinks... All right, I'll say it. There is someone, isn't there? Yes. You know her long? I don't want to talk about her. You don't want to marry her? I'm trying to be very grown up about this, Cleve. What is it? Still father's little girl. In hair ribbon, shorts. I know. That's my trouble. I know it. Do you want to marry her? I'm married to you, the children, and the years. You haven't answered my question. You can't divorce a child. That isn't what I want to hear. Oh, Cleve. Yes, Pam. I still love you. Well, then what? I don't know. You've got to give me time. I'm all mixed up. Cleve, please don't leave me. I love you. Miles is waiting. And? Yes. So is she. If you would like to know a quick, easy way to ease the pain of a headache, neuritis, or neuralgia, then by all means try Anison. Your own dentist or physician may at one time or another have handed you an envelope containing Anison tablets. Then you already know how incredibly fast and effectively Anison brings relief. Anison is like a doctor's prescription. That is, Anison contains not just one but a combination of medically proven active ingredients. For your own sake, try Anison. Anison is sold to you on this guarantee. If the first few tablets do not give you all the relief you want as fast as you want it, you may return the unused portion and your money will be refunded. You can get Anison tablets at any drug counter. Anison comes in handy boxes of 12 and 30 tablets, and economical family-sized bottles of 50 and 100. You are listening to the Screen Director's Playhouse, the Thursday night feature on NBC's All-Star Festival, brought to you by RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television... By Chesterfield, the cigarette that has for you what every smoker wants, mildness plus no unpleasant aftertaste, and by the makers of Anison for the fast relief of headache, neuritis, and neuralgia. The Screen Director's Playhouse presentation of Thelma Jordan, starring Barbara Stanwyck and Wendell Corey, will continue in just a moment after a brief pause for station identification. This is the Screen Director's Playhouse. We continue with the third act of Thelma Jordan, starring Wendell Corey as Cleve Marshall and Barbara Stanwyck as Thelma Jordan. J. 
June 7th entry, file of Thelma Jordan. The Edwards estate was overflowing with reporters, police, and the usual thrill-seeking spectators. Beneath the library window in a rain-soaked flower bed, a lab man was digging out a footprint. Obviously, whoever left it was in too much of a hurry to use a regular exit. Meanwhile, as DA, I was interrogating Miss Thelma Jordan. I've told you all I can think of, Mr. Scott. When I was in trouble, I naturally thought of Aunt Vera, my mother's sister. I had nowhere else to go. I was in ill health without funds. Mm -hmm. I think after a while, she was glad. I did little things for her, fixed her hair in new ways and read to her. I was companionship she hadn't had for a long time. So she changed her will. Well, that's what you keep telling me, but I had no knowledge of that. Do you know to whom the money was bequeathed in the original will? I didn't even know there was a will. To the county. There was to be a park in her honor. I'm sorry about that. It's not my fault. Well, don't be sorry. There may still be that park. Mr. Scott, in your dealings with me, you're questioning your suspicions. Don't be sarcastic. I'm not a criminal. Don't treat me so. You almost have me apologizing, but I'll control myself. Cleve, may I speak to you a minute? Surely. You wait for me in the sunroom, Miss Jordan. Very well. Well, what do you think, Cleve? It's too early. Now, what about those footprints under the library window? Mm, I don't think they were the burglars. I don't think there was a burglary. Uh, cozy her up. See so we can get out of it. Sunroom over there. Do my best, Scott. Cleve. Be careful. They're going to arrest me, aren't they? Scott isn't going to make a mistake like oh, that. Don't lie. But why? What happened? I don't know too much myself, except that whoever was here last night, it apparently wasn't Tony. But how? I haven't even told them about him. You didn't have to. He called you this morning from Chicago. Tony? Why? It'd be a good thing to establish an alibi. Another thing. Auntie's dead. Nice fat will. Wouldn't he be interested in that? Want to pick up again? Oh, that still doesn't mean anything. There are planes he could have made it by this morning. That's what Scott's getting the final reports on now. He's had the Chicago police on it for hours. If this alibi is good... What else did they find out about him? For one thing, that you're not married to him. Never were. Why did you lie to me? I was ashamed. I couldn't tell you the truth. Why did you have to tell me? I anything? don't know. You forced me. It was always your wife, your strings. I'm sick of it. All right. It's still my wife, my strings. I know, I know. That's what makes the whole thing so... Oh, Cleve, we haven't time to quarrel. I'll do anything possible. Anything. <sighs> A lawyer first, I guess. But I haven't any money. I'll take care of it. There's a man in San Francisco, Kingsley Willis. He's the best. You have to do more than that. What more? You know how my hands are tied. Things are too close now for comfort. Cleve, suppose the district attorney turns it over to you. He won't. He's not going to let a thing like this get away That's from That's what I mean. He'll be after me. You won't. Take the case myself against you. How better could you protect me? Hold it up. Demand more evidence. In the meantime, they'll find out who did it. In the meantime, anything can happen. Be careful, Scott. Well, no signed confession. I'm surprised. Mr. Marshall has been very kind to me. Well, that's because he doesn't know everything about you that I do, Miss Jordan. I've just been talking to an old friend of yours in Chicago, a Mr. Tony Laredo. He says he'd like to help you out, but he's fresh out of money right now. Help me? In what? Well, I told him we were arresting you for murder. There was a burglary last night. Jewels are missing. I will find them around. There was a phone call last night. I've been sort of saving it. Tell us, Sidney. I'm sorry, Miss Jordan. That man who's been calling you up lately, who you pretend is a lot of different names... A number of my friends call me. Uh, that man you meet down at the gate or on the road... Let's just call him Mr. X, Well, huh? he phoned first a few minutes after nine, and I hung up. When he phoned back, I waited, and you answered his ring, Miss Jordan. Something's happened, you said. Come at once. I didn't think much of it at the time, but I do now. And so will a jury, since 40 minutes later you were pretending to be asleep. Why, Miss Jordan? I won't say anything until I see my lawyer. Uh-huh. Well, shall we go? May I get my purse and a coat? You may get nothing. <laughs> Well, Mr. District Attorney, so you got her indicted. Yes, finding those emeralds helped, Mr. Willis. Well, I wish you luck. Good day. Good day. Yes, Sergeant, there goes the slickest lawyer in the country. Who is he, boss? 
Oh, hi, Cleve. Jordan's lawyer, Willis. Kingsley Willis? You got him? Yeah, Cleve. Worse luck. But I'll handle him. Come on the office. Oh, I meant to tell you, your secretary's been looking all over for you. Your brother's been calling important, she said. No, okay. I'll call him. Miss Desmond, get my brother on the phone, will you please? I'll wait. You know, I've been thinking, uh, if you don't feel up to handling this case... No, but I like it. <laughs> I like front pages. Well, I just thought I'd ask. Hello, Alex. How are you, boy? How's the ambulance chasing? The Jordan case? Well, I'm sure, but she's got a lawyer. What? Oh, you're kidding, Alex. You wouldn't. Are you crazy? You know what a case like this means to me? Why, you double-crossing... I put him through school. I made him a lawyer. It's all my fault. Well, I might be mad with you if you'll tell me. Oh, I'm out. Disqualified. Kingsley Willis hired my brother for his defense staff. How's that for a shrewd move, huh? I'm sorry, boss. Well, Eager Beaver, here's your big break, and you better be up to it, boy, because we're going to get her. We've got to get her. <laughs> Break for us, Mr. Five Willis. more minutes, Mr. Willis. Thanks, Matron. The DA is too popular in this town. Carries too much weight with jurors. This Cleve Marshall, on the other hand, we haven't so much to worry about with him. You thought this all up yourself? No, to be honest. I give credit where credit is due. Your Aunt Vera's friend, Anonymous. The one that sent me 5000 on account to defend you. Here's the letter. Dear Mr. Willis, a smart move would be to disqualify the district attorney by hiring his brother for your defense staff. Friend Anonymous has quite a grasp of things, wouldn't you say? You did take the idea. I like it. It enables me to kill two birds with one stone. It gives me local assistance, which I need. Small-town jurors hate outsiders, you know. And a pinch-hit prosecutor. And Marshall's not so sure that you're guilty, I could tell. You haven't asked me once if I'm guilty. Why should I? I don't want to know. But aren't there certain things you should know to protect me? Miss Jordan, there are two types of criminals, the conscious and the unconscious. The latter we sometimes call the split personality, schizophrenia. That's when the left hand never lets the right hand know what it's doing. Yes, go on. I don't mean that you're schizophrenic, but that we are together. I'm the right hand, and I must never know what the left hand has done or is doing. If I should know, I might start feeling guilty and acting guilty. Uh, now are you satisfied? I suppose. And especially in a case like this when we have so many lawyers on our side. Well, haven't we? Only a lawyer would have thought of that trick. If you're finished with me now, Mr. Willis, uh, I... Thelma, uh, there's just one thing I'd like to know. Who is he? Is he Mr. X, the one they're looking for? The footprints, the telephone call? Split personality, remember? The left hand never lets the right hand know. Mm -hmm. Okay. I just wanted to know how we stand, that's all. Just how much we can count on him. We can count on him. Why did you come here to the office, Pam? I've got to see you, Cleve. I haven't been seeing her lately, if that's what worries you. I haven't been home lately because I've been busy. Getting a jury for this trial hasn't been easy. Cleve, I went to the bank this morning to have the teller record my balance in my new book. I see. Five thousand dollars. Did it cost you that to get rid of her, Cleve, or is that just the beginning? The beginning, the end, I don't know. Pam, please stay out of it's this. It's my problem, too, if she's that kind of woman. The money wasn't for blackmail, if that's what you mean. She's in trouble. I had to help her. Not the usual kind? No. Something else. And you believe her, of course. Yes, I believe her. She's not just taking advantage of the fact that you're married, the children, your position. What are you driving at? Maybe you ought to find out something more about her, Cleve. We could. Father put a detective on you. He what? Darling, I didn't approve. I haven't spoken to Father since. Do you know who she is? No, Cleve. Cleve, all I want to do is help. So do I, Cleve. Goodbye, Miles. Cleve.
What's on your mind, Scott? Cleve, you don't seem to have your mind on this Jordan case, and well, it's the biggest chance you've ever had. I have my mind on it. You wanted more evidence, and we gave it to you, the emerald necklace. And still you act like... Like you want to get it over and get away somewhere. That's right. Well, that's different. I'm sorry. In the meantime, don't muff this case. You must always keep the jury with you. Remember, prosecuting a woman is different. It's much more delicate. I'll do my best. You, uh, wouldn't like to go over your opening speech. You'll hear it in the morning. See you in court. I remind you, ladies and gentlemen, of the long and arduous procedure of jury selection we have just been through. During that time, to each prospective juror, I put the same question. Do you believe in capital punishment? You particular 12 said that you did. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here. But perhaps you had mental reservations. Perhaps you were not completely honest and said to yourself, she isn't guilty and I won't have to recommend death. But you will, Mrs. Asher, and you'll have no qualms, religious, humane, or otherwise, about this death penalty. I'll expect you Watch, Mrs. Asher, Thelma. Yes, Mr. Willis. He's antagonized her. He couldn't have picked out our juror better if he tried. Mrs. Asher, she hates him, uncharitable, unchristian. You ought to thank Mr. Marshall in your prayers sometimes. I will. may have handled some things wrong. I'm sorry about Mrs. Asher, but I've been playing up to her lately. Yeah, and she knows it. Okay, stop riding me. I didn't ask for this case. I got all the evidence in, didn't I? We'll cook her on that. Unfortunately, that's not all it takes. Willis has been too clever combating it. Did you get that this morning? The gun and the necklace could have been hidden in the smudge spot by the fleeing bandits till he could come back for them later? Who would believe that except Mrs. Asher? Anyway, Cleve, this afternoon's your big chance. When you get Thelma Jordan on the stand with that new ammunition you've got, then you can really tie into her. Don't worry. Let her try and explain away her past. That's all, brother. Where are you going? For a walk. Be back in an hour. Miss Jordan and I want to talk to you. My lawyer said not to talk to anyone unless he was here, Mr. Marshall. Legally, she doesn't have to, Mr. Marshall, but I'd advise you to, dearie. He may offer you leniency to confess. Oh, Cleve. Cleve, I've waited for this. In court, when you look at me with such hate or... Or don't look at me. I have to do that. Sometimes I think that hate is real and I can't bear it. Why do you think it might be real? The evidence. It has piled up, hasn't it? So do. But I don't believe anything I don't see. I thought maybe that was why you were here, losing confidence in me. No, in myself. There's no guarantee that this is going to turn out all right. Not to, after all you've done. I know the chances you're taking. I'm frightened, too. Of anything special? Being on the stand. The way you're going to have to go after me. If you tell the truth, there's nothing to worry I about. I can't tell all of it. What can you tell? About you, me, Sydney coming in. You're, you're having to get out so fast. That I'm going to handle in another way. What other truth can't you tell me? I don't know. There are things I'm going to have to ask about your past. Oh, that's no mystery. I already told the you. The prim repressed hostess in a hotel. Yes, that's right. Uh, then these pictures must be of another Thelma Jordan. Gambling raid photos. Scott got them from the Florida police. That blonde in the corner gave a phony name, is it you? No. That's not very convincing. It's not me, Cleve. As I was once, maybe, but not now. Oh, come, come. In You're the quibbling. Days of Tony, I told you, but not now. The past is prejudiced to the future. Did you ever hear that, Miss Jordan? For whose benefit have you changed? Aunt Vera's? So she'd leave you her money? That's not true. Perhaps we should call you Sarah Bernhardt Jordan. You told me once you wanted to be an actress. Stop it, Cleve. You can't tell me. Stop it, Cleve, in court. That's why I'm petrified with fear of going on the stand. I've just begun. What else? No more photos. Thanks. Coincidental, but still facts. Your shiny life with Tony Laredo. Odd that wherever it's shown, there were whiffs of blackmail, minor thefts, bar and brawls, quarrels. Rumors only, you said. You can't hold that against me. The jury will. Oh, Cleve, Cleve, look at me. I, I'm not like that. I'm not. Unfortunately, a jury doesn't look at you like I do. Oh, darling, I, 
I, I can't take the witness stand. What are we going to do? We? You sit tight. I'll arrange a fast call from Mr. X to Mr. Willis. <laughs> Does the defense desire to call further witnesses? There are no further witnesses, Your Honor. One moment. The prosecutor has an objection. I should like to argue for our right to cross-examine Thelma Jordan. Right? What right? What law book did you study from? I said to argue the right. How can you argue the right of something that doesn't exist? The defendant takes the stand to be examined by me, then you'll have the right to cross-examine, not otherwise. Believe me, there's nothing I would like better than to put my client on the stand. But to subject her to this prosecutor, whose vitriolic attack on this woman the is one of the... personalities of the prosecution of the defense should be kept out of this, Your Honor. Will you please tell him once and for all? Mr. Marshall, as I'm sure you know, there is no law which requires a defendant to take the stand. She does not have to prove her innocent. Guilt must be proved against her. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you have reached a verdict. We have, Your Honor. The defendant will rise and face the court. <laughs> we, the jury, find the defendant not guilty. Not guilty. Not guilty. Well, the tramp got away with it. Don't take it so hard, Cleve. It's only a lawsuit. Next time you'll have had the experience. Cleve, I'm sorry. You look so tired. Now that it's over, couldn't we talk soon? I'll call you tomorrow, Pam. Excuse me. Oh, Willis, congratulations. Thanks. The best man won, didn't we? I don't know what you mean. Maybe. Maybe I'm wrong. Why don't you answer it, Thelma? Why, Tony? Just people calling to say they're glad. Well, then at least take it off the hook. I'd like to know who this anxious guy is. Hello? Yes, Cleve. Yes, sir. Uh... Yes, yes, they've gone. You're calling from the corner? Uh, no, you can't come here. No, it's not safe. No, Cleve. I'll, uh... I'll meet you somewhere, or I'll let you know in a few days. Did he ask you if I was here? No. Why did you have to come here? Well, weren't we supposed to meet afterwards? Has anything happened to change our plan? Our plan was a long time ago. Oh, not so long. My memory's not too short. Except I gather our plan has changed. That's why I came back the first time. I didn't like that stall, I don't like this one. I'm not stalling. I just don't want to face him. Or him face me, which? Please, don't let him find us here. Why don't you tell me that night you were in love with him? I wasn't. It was Scott you were supposed to go after. Make him tumble for your charms in those burglaries. Then... All of a sudden, there was a guy named Marshall. It just happened that way. Wasn't it better the way it turned out? Sure. An assistant district attorney, married, got kids. It's always a kind. Well, just so you're not in love with him. I'm not. He's in love with me. You find that hard to resist. I'm in love with you, too. Especially now. Now that you're rich? Yeah, I suppose that does make a difference. But you brought that on yourself. I only ask for emeralds. Instead, I wind up with a lifelong annuity. You think I'm going to let that get away from me? I'll sign it over to you. Everything. Any deal you want. But we're finished. I'm not going away with uh -uh. you. No. no that, that might look like complicity. Later, if you're so anxious to get away from me. But you'll change your mind. Come here a minute. I'll help you change it now. Oh, don't, Tony. Don't. I... Go on. Get rid of him. Yes. Yes, you, you stay here. I'll take him into the library. I don't care how. I'll just get rid of him. Then we're leaving. You and me. Keep in mind the district attorney would still like to know about those footprints. Who is Mr. X? I was worried I had to come. Come with me, Cleve. Into the library where I've told you so many lies. What is it? What happened? Tony's come after me. I'm going away with him. I don't believe that. You don't believe anything you don't see. I don't want to talk about the trial. That's over. 
Why is Tony here? He's part of it. He's all of it. I've always loved him. That's not true. You're lying. No, no. Listen to me. We've never had much time together. We haven't now. Oh, you must have known, except you didn't want to know. That's why you called Willis and told him not to put me on the stand. You knew I'd break down. Okay. I killed her. Right from that corner. I didn't know about the will. I was getting the jewels for Tony. I came out here with that plan. Go on, don't let me interrupt. Well, you could help Tony. It isn't easy. She had a gun when she found me at the safe. I'd like to say I didn't intend to kill her. But when you have a gun, you always intend if you have to. But you were the fall guy, Cleve, right from the beginning. Yes, you're right. I suppose, as you said, I must have known you killed her all along. Though I did think it was Tony. From Chicago, I killed Aunt Vera? Whatever the angle, get out of her life and stay out of it. You don't seem to understand. We started this together, we finished together. You've got your chance, Laredo. Take it. Otherwise, what? Thelma's been acquitted and can't be tried again. But you can for complicity. And you? Why would that put you, Mr. Let it go, Cleve. Don't you see? He sees. That's a convenient part about a fall guy. Once you've got him hooked, you've always got him hooked. Why, I'll Don't break... believe he has a gun! It's tough luck. It was supposed to be Scott who could destroy evidence, but you were so anxious. Is that true, Thelma? Of course it's true, you pigeon! Break my skull, will you? Get your things, Thelma. <laughs> And after a nice trip, I thought we'd go to Europe, Paris, and the Riviera. How would you like that? As far away as possible. Sure. Give me a light. Uh, I don't have any matches. I'll use this dashboard lighter. You were right. It was hard, but it's better this way. Go a little faster. What's your hurry, baby? We're doing 70 Faster! Now. Okay. He's lucky to get off like he did. Yes. He only lost his wife and home. You'll get him back. Here's your lighter. Nice and red hot, isn't it? You won't go away from me. No. No, I won't leave you. Ever. Oh! We'll never leave each other. Never, never. <laughs> Raider's dead, but she's still alive. For how long, I don't know. Thanks, Doctor. There's no... more to say. What about this, Tony? How many confessions do you want? It was no accident? No accident, Mr. Scott. Now you've got two confessions. Hello, Tony. He's confessed everything, Cleve. Except who Mr. X is. Why don't you tell him? I love him. That's why. Back in a few minutes. I couldn't go on with him, Cleve. You did that for me. I'm glad it's over. All my life, struggling. The good... And the bed. Save your strength, darling. Willis said I was two people. He was right. You don't suppose they could just let half of me die? Doctor! That's over, Cleve. All over. Let's go. Okay. Thanks for leaving us together. How long have you known? Oh, for an hour or so. Tony talked. I guess you know what it means. Disbarment, no more law practice anywhere. I'm sorry, I'll have to report it. I already have. Cleve, I, uh, I've always liked you... Scott, would you phone Pam? I already have. I just wanted to tell her I'll get in touch with her later. Yeah, that's what she said, too. Later. But she'll get over it. 
So long. I'll be seeing you, Cleve. Good luck. Miles Scott, investigator of human beings. Eh, maybe if I get to live to a hundred, I'll understand one of them. I don't know. And so we close the file on Thelma Jordan. Our stars, Barbara Stanwyck and Wendell Corey, will return in just a moment with this week's guest screen director. Next Thursday, the Screen Director's Playhouse brings you two more great stars, Bob Hope and Rhonda Fleming. And our adaptation for the first time on the air will be The Great Lover. The following week, on the evening of Hollywood's Great Academy Awards, we are proud to present Academy nominees James Stewart and Eleanor Parker in the unforgettable romantic drama Next Time We Love. Now, here again are tonight's stars, Wendell Corey and Barbara Stanwyck. The motion picture set is the director's canvas. Here, he is the guiding artist. The camera is his brush, the actors his colors, and under his sure stroke, there can be excitement, drama, pathos, and laughter. Ladies and gentlemen, the director of The File on Thelma Jordan is certainly a major artist of his craft. Naturally, I speak of my friend, Robert C. Odmack. I go along with that, Barbara. When a man can draw such vivid portrayals as The Killers, Dark Mirror... Spiral Staircase, and many others equally exciting. Well, it's a great privilege to be associated with Robert C. Odmack. Barbara, Wendell, thank you very, very much for your kind thoughts. When a director is surrounded by as fine artists as yourself, well, his job is not too difficult. I can only say I really enjoyed making this picture with you, and I look forward to the day when I can again work with you. And may I speak of generosity for a few seconds? There is a way we can all express it. I speak of the Red Cross Drive, which is now in progress. Will you open your hearts and your purses? Give, so that the Red Cross can give. Thank you. Even a little can mean so much. Don't let them down. Remember, don't let your window be bare. Dress it with a Red Cross seal. Good night, everyone. Thelma Jordan was presented through the courtesy of Hal Wallace Productions, whose current release is the Paramount picture September Affair, starring Joan Fontaine and Joseph Cotton. Wendell Corey may currently be seen in the Nat Holt production for Paramount, The Great Missouri Raid. Robert C. Odmack has just finished The Whistle at Caton Falls for Columbia Pictures. Included in tonight's cast were Bill Conrad, Hi Averback, Ralph Moody, Stan Waxman, Peggy Weber, Ruth Parrott, and Jack Carroll. Thelma Jordan was adapted for radio by Jack Rubin from an original story by Marty Holland. Screen Director's Playhouse is produced by Howard Wiley and directed by Bill Karn. Portions of tonight's broadcast were transcribed. This is Jimmy Wallington speaking and inviting you to listen next week when we present for the first time on the air The Great Lover, starring Bob Hope and Rhonda Fleming. <laughs> again next week to Screen Director's Playhouse, the Thursday night feature on NBC's all-star festival of comedy, music, mystery, and drama. Listen tomorrow evening to the one and only Duffy's Tavern, the Friday night feature of the all-star festival. Saturday, enjoy yourself with Dennis Day and Judy Canova. They're on NBC. NBC.